This presentation will take a look at theoretical perspectives in demography focused on explaining population growth. Most discussions of demographic theory begin with Thomas Malthus and his ideas, which date back to the late 1700s. And Malthus was concerned about the prospect of overpopulation and the resulting catastrophes that would ensue. He called those population checks. Malthus was concerned that population growth was occurring at a more rapid pace than was food growth, and that eventually the size of the population would outstrip the size of the food supply, and this would lead to famine and war. He also believed that this was a natural process outside of human control, and the only saving grace that humans had was moral virtue and self-restraint. Malthus also tended to blame the poor for their uh, lack of moral virtue and restraint and for being the source of most population growth. Critics, of course, argue that was unfair and also unjustified empirically. Not long after Malthus wrote his ideas, John Stuart Mill offered a counter view which suggested that human population was within our control and that we would eventually see a leveling off of population when people achieved uh, a level of economic comfort uh, that they could realize. Uh, so the standard of living becomes a major determinant of fertility levels. and People are more likely to have kids if they feel like their kids can have a good life. For the Marxian perspective, of course, beginning with Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, uh, the, the question of population was one not of concern. They were more concerned with the structure and form of the economy, and that, of course, was, was their critique of capitalism. They felt that the overpopulation and poverty that uh, Malthus observed was a result of capitalism, not overpopulation. And then they argued that if there was a shift to a socialist uh, a form of economy that overpopulation would be accommodated because even the poorest would receive uh, basic needs. And finally, Durkheim, in thinking about population growth, had a very optimistic view, suggesting that as the population got larger, uh, the quality of life uh, increased through the specialization of the division of labor. Greater and greater occupations were being developed. The economy blossomed, therefore, as a result of population growth. In the mid to early 20th century, the notion of the demographic transition came into focus, and this has become a dominant framework in the field of demography for thinking about population growth in terms of births and deaths. Uh, you'll notice it does not uh, really include anything uh, always about migration, but in, in this case, in this table, it does. So essentially what the story is, is uh, there are stages in the demographic transition. Uh, part of this is the epidemiological transition, which characterizes the death rate. But then there's also a, a fertility transition that takes place simultaneously. So essentially in stage one, which characterized uh, hunting and gathering times for human beings, there was a high birth rate, but there was a high death rate to offset it. And as a result, population growth was always kept in check. Population exploded when the epidemiological transition started to come into play as a lot of the main causes of death were starting to be addressed. Food was becoming more plentiful and diseases were being eradicated. Uh, and you know, a lot of that was because of improvements in medicine, but also in terms of sanitation. And that's during that time that the population began to explode. We call that stage two. And stage three, the fertility transition kicks in to catch up to the epidemiological or mortality transition. And uh, people realize that as their kids have a greater chance of survival, there's no need for so many kids. The fertility level, therefore, begins to decline. And as a result, population growth again reaches sort of an equilibrium. Now, this model is not without its critics, but it has become a very useful way to conceptualize the relationship between births and deaths across societies. It does not have perfect empirical support, but it does have incredible uh utility as a general rule of thumb. The last perspective uh, we want to take a look at is the feminist perspective because uh, empirically and uh, theoretically there's a lot of room to incorporate some of this. Uh, the view that uh, gender is important to the discussion of population growth. And essentially the argument from the feminist perspective is that 
Much of the world's population growth has resulted from a global patriarchal structure. And that is to say that decisions about family planning and about fertility have largely been in the hands of men. And women, because of their disempowerment, have had little say in terms of how many children they're having. And there's quite a bit of uh, research that supports the view that if you give women uh, both educational and occupational opportunity, that they will uh, have fewer children. A lot of that is because they simply start a family later in life. And another part of that is because they're defined by more than just fertility. They're defined by their careers and by their, uh, their education. Uh, so this is the new horizon, theoretically, uh, within demography. And uh, we'll see where it takes us. But the, the, that's going to wrap up our brief introduction to the various theoretical perspectives in demography. Thanks for watching.